They were among some of the biggest names in British history, Jewish titans in the fields of politics, business and culture. And they're honored here at London's National Portrait Gallery. We go on a whistle-stop tour of one of London's best-loved museums to meet your loyal Jewish subjects. The National Portrait Gallery is about people. And in fact, when the gallery was founded in the middle of the 19th century, the whole ethos was about history, not art. Rachel Kolsky knows a thing or two about the National Portrait Gallery in London. As a tour guide, researcher, and a British Jew herself, she says you can trace the history of British Jews throughout the museum. For instance, there are no portraits of Jews or artwork by Jews during the 13th century because that was the time of the expulsion. That's why our journey begins in the 18th century with perhaps the most famous British Jew of all time, twice the Prime Minister, Benjamin Disraeli. He only managed to do that because of what happened to him at the age of 12. At the age of 12, there was a dispute between his father and their synagogue, Bevis Marks, in the city of London, and Isaac Disraeli, Benjamin's father, took the family to the church of St. Andrew Holborn and had his family baptized as Christians. So at the age of 12, Benjamin Disraeli was technically a Christian. This internal conflict between Judaism and conversion was a common theme throughout the tour of British Jewish history. Some felt they had to abandon their Jewish roots to feel accepted in society, while others stayed true to their religion. Chemist, industrialist, and father and son, Ludwig and Robert Mond are captured here as bronze statues. For me, what's fascinating about the family is that Ludwig was born into an Orthodox Jewish family, basically had religion played no part in his life. Robert and Alfred were brought up um, sort of in an atheist world. Alfred's son, Henry, actually converted back to Judaism. So what I find fascinating about the Mons is within three generations, you went from Jewish, atheist, and back. There are a few pieces of Jewish artists by Jewish artists also on display. Architect Sir Nicholas Pevsner was painted by Hans Schwartz. Both born and died 20 years apart, both were emigres from Nazi Europe, and both interned when they arrived to Britain as enemy aliens. Um, I particularly love this, this portrait because I love the colouring, actually. I love the sort of the ochre tones of this suit, which I think is probably some lovely linen, linen suit. And, you know, Pevsner's holding a pen and, 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 and a book, you know, a writer, and also he's got that lovely kind... If you look at his face, he's got those little kind, really kindly eyes behind those glasses. So it's a painting I'm very much fond of. And lastly, the recently deceased great Lucian Freud, grandson of psychologist Sigmund, is honored both as artist and sitter. He was a surprise choice of painter, commissioned to capture the likeness of the fourth Lord Rothschild, Jacob, seen here in a painting in 1989. Later, Freud himself was a subject of a bust by New York-born Jewish artist Jacob Epstein. Jacob Epstein married, but had a number of affairs and children by his mistresses, one of whom, one of his mistresses was a lady called Kitty Garman. They, in turn, had a daughter called Kitty, and Lucien Freud, in turn, married Kitty. So for a time, Jacob Epstein was Lucien Freud's father-in-law. That was just one of the Jewish tours Kolsky has on offer. To visit more, go to golondontours.com. I'm Cindy Martin for JN1 in London.